Hello, everyone. I am Brian DeMario. Um, I am be presenting on how to catch the wave of business. Um, we implemented Tempest 16 months ago. We uh, did it in a three month getting into production, you could say. We use it for several aspects of our business, project management. We also use it for actual business capabilities. And I'm more talking about the business side of it since we have a lot of great presenters today about projects and so forth. So we also use it for profitability, time usage, and related to time usage is the wave. The wave is, oh, if it moves, there we go, Oops, too far. The wave is the seasonal trend of activities with peaks and valleys, high points and low points, or what most people believe or know it as seasonality. Um, me being in Texas, North Texas, the closest wave I ever dreamed about is the one on the left, which is the six hour drive away. But in business, it is the one to the right in an ideal form. Very easy to know when your you know, high points and low points are. Why this is important is your people and your money. The understanding the wave has a large impact. It can cause a lot of problems, but also if you can understand it and use it well, it gives better longevity to your teams, better productivity, better time effectiveness. And from the money side, because people will look after that and look at it is it normally salary expenses are normally 43% of your operating expense. So if you have to hire a lot more people, that means your costs go up, which causes you know your finance people to be very sad inside. That being said, the way to handle it is kind of a how-to in a general sense. To catch the wave is pretty much this. You need to gather the right data. You need to analyze it, get solutions based on your business. You need to create, you need to get action and approval, pretty much the action for approvals. You need to monitor it and then evaluate it in a way to see if it did what it needed to be done, or do you need to go down to our path that was successful, and or do you need to break it down further and further, like any good analysis. This is just a general guideline. This isn't an academic model. This is just trying to help frame around how you can be successful in this endeavor. Gathering data. Since we are using talking about Tempest, which is a great tool, as I said, for what we use it for, make sure you have a system to gather. Do not try to do this in Excel to gather hours and so forth. Know the variables you wish to be measuring. So what I mean is for us, we have our HR data in here, the ones that are classified people's job titles. We can put skills in here, uh, any type of knowledge, such as if they're IT, if they know a certain type of language, those type of variables of if it's a non-exempt or exempt department, location, ranks. All these variables you want to make sure you know when you're trying to figure out seasonality so you can target the right group. And also related to your projects, if you are targeting just projects for projects, being the you know IT ones we've seen, or if we are talking about, in this case, the business, uh, what tasks they are doing. So I'm in the financial service industry. We have large peaks and you know, after quarters, because that's when financials are normally done. You know, do we want to check financial statement prep or when management fees are calculated and so forth? So you can manage and gather those variables to use for your analysis to see is that what we're trying to gauge and which ones have that. A very important thing, as everyone probably knows in project management, just like in gathering data, it's great to gather all the data, but have the scope in mind or you will completely crash. You will eventually not be able to control it and it will get out of control and you'll be stuck in data paralysis forever. Analyze. You, when you're looking at the data, think, think statistics and facts when you're looking at it. Think how can you reuse it and have that analysis mindset of 
What about this? Why is this here? What else are we trying to gain from this besides it's a 400 hours used versus 100 hours reused? And why it's important to reusable is because you'll probably be running this several times of watching the trend data over and over, and you don't want to have to keep rebuilding. It's good to be able to put it back in the spreadsheet or AWS or any other tool you're using, such as R, SPSS, uh, Excel, to make this repeatable, easy process that you aren't wasting time. One thing you want to make sure as a tip is only based on that same scope conversation, make sure you're only targeting one wave at a time. You cannot devour the ocean. You can't ride every wave. You only have so much time and so do your people to look at all this. So you want to target what you can actually do within your time. And also, if you do too much, you may make the wrong uh, assumptions. So it's good to target a group and gain the pers uh, perspectives from others uh, in the business. So even though you gather the data, you man candle, uh, send slope, all these great analytics, you want to also have a conversation with the business to confirm that all your analysis of regression makes sense or is there an anomaly when you ran it? Such as, oh, they hired 15 people because this one month, that's why it's higher. Or you can do this because they're on vacation or something along those lines. You would not know without being in the business and being there. It is always nice if you have the ability to use a BI tool. It makes life easier, just like any statistics tool, like Minitab, as I said, or R. Uh, and data visualization is so much better than just throwing numbers against anything. It catches the eye better. Solutions. Kind of restating, you need to know your business, what they're willing to accept and what they're not going to accept for solutions when you start building and talking, looking at the data. If your media and other idea is that outsourcing or uh, automation is the thing that needs to be done, but the business is not ready or your IT is not ready or there's another solution down the pipeline that's going on, you need to know what your business is doing for the long and short. And in general, is it going to be accepted from a culture standpoint and everything before you just start throwing off ideas or trying to achieve them immediately? Next thing. Tactical versus strategy. You need to understand what you can do now and what can be done later as a whole. Most time, seasonality plans can't be done overnight. Definitely for larger companies, uh, if you're a small company of 10 people, probably could you know do some shifting very easily. If you're a larger company of you know 200,000 plus people, uh, shifting, changing roles, or doing a flex team, which is the idea of having you know, so many people do work on one client, but then you have other people because clients are at different time frames of their um, T plus when there's something to do SLAs, you can shift people around. That could be a large undertaking of people's lives, businesses, change management, and other things. Also, when you do solutions, make sure you have your key performance indicators your KPIs and your measure of success and so forth of your solution you're trying to do and what the measures for the business are trying to gain. If they just they do not align, then it's going to be very hard to, one, sell it uh, to them as a solution and two, to actually, you know, gain that benefit that they everyone wants and needs and to even see the benefit if you don't have anything. If you're just saying this is great and let's move on, there's no measure to for that success, then you will pretty much won't be able to say you achieved as much as you did. The last one is turn into a project because they will be a project in every sense. If you look at the examples below, offshoring or outsourcing, uh, seasonality or flex team, automation, business process improvement, there's other solutions out there. All these would be projects in every sense. They would have change management. You would have several teams possibly involved, depending on the solution. You would have to have a good governance, a good plan, uh, resourcing these items inside of it. So it's good to project it. Otherwise, it will 
keep moving out just like with scope creep and the time frame and eventually people will lose faith in it and your hard work of analysis will disappear, which no one would like. Action. Uh, every company is a little different, but the general tips is you want to present your idea in some form with its options um, to your stakeholders and groups, unless you are the stakeholder itself. Uh, if you have autonomous power, then you know just get agreements and move on. Uh, but most time, you are someone else is looking at strategically and finding this opportunity. You need to present it. You need to get that buy-in from your team, their team, the business, everyone else to make sure everyone has the same understanding of it. And the next piece is have ownership and accountabilities throughout the action. And because, as I said, project, it's project. A general, every company is different, I said, kind of generalized steps which I think are very important, have some type of business case or uh, I business case or item that pretty much states the benefits, why you're doing it, what can be achieved, cost saving, so forth and so on. As I've stated, you need to present it, have a presentation, it needs to hit the value targets of the business and so forth. You need to have them have full agreement. So if the business doesn't agree, then they'll always be fighting against you and the so will the people. You want to have them agree to the solution, the return on investment. You want to have them pretty much have the transparency. It's not anything different. You want to have approval, obviously, from your stakeholders and also the executives. The next one, you need to go and communicate the moving forward. You don't want to do this in the shelter, even if no matter what, because then people will feel something is going on behind their back. Monitoring progress. Uh, this is pretty standard in project management. No, you want to create a cadence. It's always based on how your project is set out. So monthly, weekly, yearly, it really is depending on how long your seasonality, your company is different. Retail is different than financial service, IT, manufacturing. Uh, when I worked in those, they were also different. So everyone has a cadence that needs to make sense. You need to do your plan versus actual being shown. I showed a couple examples here. It's based on your company, how they like to see them. You, you know, the project plan is always a good one. Uh, graphs and so forth to show trends over time, quantitative versus qualitative. Sometimes it's the very easy one of revenue, operating costs, all the financials you can pull from a system. And sometimes it is your voice of the customer or other forms of understanding how people feel with the change. Does it really make their life better? How does this work? Did this do this? These aspects make a difference in how you are doing, and you can actually transparency seeing your monitoring your steps throughout the process. Next one is the evaluate. This is when you are getting to points when you've set your own milestones in the project and so forth. You need to look at your monitoring and evaluate, know when to stop or keep going. Sometimes you had a great idea, everyone agreed. Once you get into it, let's just say automating something and you realize it's a lot harder than you thought it'd be to automate this process, then is it still worth the to go forward. You may have to redo analysis on the data. How much does this cost? Re-get agreement and restart over. Or do you just keep, or is everything going well as you thought? You keep going and continuing. You keep collecting data because it allows you to see, is it already working? Is there some type of new trend? Has the company changed something? You want to always collect it to see overall impact and change. Uh, you want to validate your successes. So if you said month 13 of this after the project's done, you want to make sure you have that um, marked and validated and realization of your success. So realization of ROI or cost savings. The next piece is 
next? So what do you do? Do you go to the next business line? Do you continue what you're doing, try to find the next piece of your analysis? There's always going to be a next. Now, seasonality, it doesn't just appear. You just try to control it and try to have it work better for your team. When you're evaluating, these are these general five, I want to call pillars that you need to look after. Did when you're evaluating everything, did all the inputs make sense? Did you miss anything? The employees or partners or suppliers, from resource standpoint, your environment, was it the market, the customer competition, if you're related to a sales part of uh, seasonality piece? Is it still aligned to the strategy that was given, the brand image capabilities? For example, if your brand is all about being made in the country that you work and then you outsource everything, you might have missed the mark a little the same. But if you're about cost efficiency or something else, then it's, it all needs to align to what you are trying to achieve. Same with operation is, uh, did all the teams and leaders and roles and responsibilities, work process by nature, value chains, and so forth. You want to make sure that through each of these, that when you're evaluating, you have achieved what you wanted to, and that it didn't change what your company's uh, total success and purpose is. With that being said, MUFG, where I work, kind of the beast of a bank, it is the fifth largest global bank in the world. It, the group I work inside of it is the fifth largest fund administrator out there in the world. We provide a host of services, and I do not want to go too deep. If anyone's really uh, very interested in it, they can send an email over. Uh, we have a great beauty department, but we pretty much do uh, fund accounting from SPV all the way down to for private equity, real estate, fund to fund, and so forth. We are very large and complicated, and we use our use Tempest for seasonality for understanding certain groups. So the use case we did it on was for the 16 months, 50,000 plus time entries, 800,000 plus hours. We use Tempest to gather it on a monthly and weekly basis, a large amount of data in short, using techniques like Mankindal, Shin Slope to determine where we are sliding if it's a, for a certain group below. Uh, box and whisker to see if there's outliers, where's our median. Comparisons, which is the purple over here, the comparisons and so forth. So, you know, where is the big red trend being where your peaks are, blue is your normalization of work pretty much, and purple being the, you know, your slow periods. Understanding those pieces to have those discussion with leaders to to make a decision point. The approach we did was multi-phase. Uh, it's over multiple years, this will be done. We only targeted one business line for business titles or job titles. Uh, the processes we did are pretty much, we're gonna standardize processes because that is probably the best one of the best things you can do. We're going to do automation toward items and certain functions and tasks. And then we are also going to have some moving closer to clients to improve um, conversations and so forth for our global side of the, the world type thing. So then you can have that you know, net promoter school score and so forth. Our, as it says, the examples are, you know, examples uh, aren't real numbers, but these are our long-term plans, KPIs, you know, cost savings of a certain amount was one of the items, customer service or satisfaction, and then the overall return on investment for the effort that was done. The evaluation for the next step is we're going to continue to how our phased approaches, but other businesses have 
requested um, to have theirs further looked in to expand to their business for data and to work with them. Because when you start seeing other groups doing well, um, normally other businesses say, I want to join in too. So in partial conclusion here, um, the wave is always there, as I've stated. Uh, this is just a method of using Tempest data that you can just go into the system, report, run a report of people's actuals, and be able to use that data to statistically work out to better serve your employees, because no one wants to work 80 hour weeks every week, or on, a, on the peaks 100 or so, to be able to figure out a way. When you are working on these, create checkpoints and keep it easy. Don't make a complicated system when you're actually running the projects, uh, like any project manager and everyone else will say on here. Probably you need to make it very simple, have it on monthly, quarterly, whatever it is. And when you're doing so, make sure you're keeping everything transparent with the data you're using, how you're calculating it, what was the method that you did it, have you know Tableau BI Excel reports come out so people can see if there's a change, what benefits, um, communicate to teams what you are doing, and also make sure that you are uh, being transparent in the entirety of the event that are transpiring. Next is change directions when needed. That's kind of going back to the evaluation piece that you need to, if it looks like the ROI or this is not what we thought it was going to be, make that decision um, to change directions for the best for the company. That no one, that you, you should not just do it because you said you need to make sure everyone's that's agreed, they have agreed that they understand that they can move, they are the stakeholder, their business, their people, that you can just change what's best for everyone. And I think I've stated several, several times, and very much uh, Tempest does help extremely well here as people put in their time. Keep collecting data uh, at the current level or at a more detailed level. So if the tasks aren't the level that is being collected, you need extra points. As we discovered in, uh, at NUFD, we started at a certain level and then we realized some of the phrase, some of the tasks need to be separated into two, such as financial prep versus actually uh, reviewing the financial statements. So you can see how much time your team is spending on it, just like with onboarding new clients and so forth and so on. Just keep collecting data. It can all be used to help springboard other projects that are not just seasonality, but process improvement projects, possible IT projects, automation projects, and so forth. With that, with all that being said, that is pretty much uh, the, the use case for how Tempest can help in the seasonality of uh, your business and other applications that are more business driven versus projects alone. I thank you guys for your time. Have a wonderful day.